What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Lexi J Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Lexi Johnson. My husband and co-host is back. Uh, Brett's here with us. So this week, we're actually going to talk more relationship stuff. So it's the end of January somehow. January's flown by. And we know what's right around the corner. You've lar- probably been marketed it already. If you walked into Walmart, it's probably pink and red everywhere. Um, Valentine's Day is coming up. And you're listening to two people that are admittedly horrible about valentine's day we really are true i don't know that we've ever done anything special for valentine's day but we want to talk to you about this because i think that valentine's day and like holidays in general are just marketed to kind of make you feel as if you should be doing way more than you already are and i'm not saying that you should just you know coast in your relationship but i want to talk about really the idea that you know, being flown to some extravagant place or walking into a bed covered in roses or, you know, just like these gigantic gestures like that is the ideal. And we're, we're sold that and we're see- it's seen on, you know, in movies and TV. And that's what you grow up thinking like every Valentine's Day is going to be like. And then you grow up and it's not that. And we are now close to, I mean, I'm still going to claim that I'm mid 20s because I'm 27. Um, (laughs) We're in our late 20s. We've been together for almost, I mean, it'll be nine years this year. And I want to talk about what actual love is like, like what actual love is. And don't get me wrong, like those romantic gestures, I'm not like shitting on that. I think that's super special. I think it's amazing. But that's not like the day to day. That's not what I've looked back in our eight and a half year relationship and thought about it's not like those little instances you know or those large instances I guess I should say so I want to talk about love it's Feb it's almost February I have my husband back um Dr. Love (laughs) I don't want to talk about love anymore (laughs) um no but I, I saw a video on TikTok and I just thought it was so so well stated because she was kind of posing it in this way and she said you know we have this idea of what these holidays will be like and what a relationship will be like as an adult you growing up like as a teenager I feel like you're just like you know moony eyed thinking about how you're going to be walking on clouds with your husband one day and I don't get me wrong like I am head over heels for Brett but it's not like the big romantic gestures because those don't happen very often and it's not necessarily it's not realistic like I know everything there is to know about Brett and he knows everything there is to know about me and when you're in that honeymoon phase everything is so new and exciting but really when I think about the day-to-day and it's become even more it's given me so much better perspective in the past several months where we've been living apart for the most part just because we're finishing our house build and he has to work in the office so we're not spending as much time together and I just am so much more grateful for those little things so um I wanted to talk about that and like for instance Brett wakes up like 15 minutes earlier than me when we're together he wakes up like 15 minutes earlier than me so he can get coffee started so he can let the dogs out so I don't have to bother with that and it's little things like that he'll he'll lay in my spot sometimes before I get into bed that way my spot's warm because he knows I get cold when I'm when I'm going to sleep or because he knows that and because he knew that we were going to be spending so much time apart, when he drove down to help unpack here at the lake, he actually stopped at Walmart and he got a little heated blanket. And I didn't ask him to do that. It was just like, it's little gestures like that when you think back and they make up your life. They make up your relationship together. You're sweet. Thank you. Yeah, so... I- I have, yeah, like you said, admittedly been horrible at Valentine's Day. There's, I don't think there's been a single Valentine's Day where I've had like some big gesture. Is there? No. <laughs> it's a quick no. Uh, it's the truth. <laughs> um, all right. Our dogs. One second. Butler and Delta are down here with us. They we probably can't see them. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves, please. All right. Um. But yeah, there hasn't really been one single Valentine's Day where I think that I've had some big grand gesture. But I kind of like it that way. 
I don't know, maybe that's me just justifying the fact that I don't ever make it a huge deal. But in my eyes, Valentine's Day, it's, it's wildly commercialized. I mean, that's, it's like a, it's a, it's a profit center for, for companies. So, you know, they, they push it really hard and they almost make you feel bad if you don't do something big and, and, you know, some big grand gesture. But to me, like, true love isn't like one big grand gesture every year where it's like, okay, well I'll make up for being a shitty husband, you know, for the entire year by doing one big thing. And I think that's, that's wrong. Like it's like you said, I think that it's the little things throughout, you know, over, over, a over the course of time that really make a difference and keep a relationship truly strong because really it's like a, it's like a really, really short term band aid. Like, would you be happy? You know, would you actually be happy if your husband was pretty what pretty much shitty all the time? And then, you know, you just know that on Valentine's Day, he's going to do something way out of the norm. And you just know that every year, well, I'll just wait till Valentine's Day, and then I'll feel the love. No, absolutely not. And I just think that that that's what a, a lot of people view it as is like their opportunity to to make up for all their shortcomings I think so too and it's it is it's viewing love in your relationship more as like a it's a one-time fee rather than just like daily maintenance and daily little deposits into your relationship and I think that that's where it like chips away is when you fall on those little daily deposits because it's those I mean it's the bulk of your life it's genuinely from your heart of hearts just wanting the other person's life to be better and to be easier Mm -hmm. and it's not i don't know a crazy balloon bouquet or a million flowers all of that is lovely if that's what you're into and that's what you know your partner does for you on valentine's day but do they just do they just do it out of out of the kindness of their heart and out of their admiration for you that they just want you to have a better day That they just want to make your day just a little bit easier because that's how I view like Brett waking up just a little bit earlier so I don't have to mess with the dogs so I don't have to get the coffee ready and it's just because he he wants me to you know have an easy morning and he wants my day to get started on the way that I like my day to start and it's it's little things like that yeah I think it becomes obligatory at some point like where it's like okay well I've got to do this on Valentine's Day or you know she's going to be pissed and that's where I think all the problems start to show their ugly face because. Are you going to, going to say something? Yeah. I'm just, I'm just thinking of a best way to put this into words. It, I mean, it, it's sad. I mean, it, it may, it, it's upsetting to think about that. That's how a lot of relationships are, that there's not really any daily effort. That there, there's not, they don't treat the relationship like, one great long friendship like are you friends with your with your significant other or are you just living with one another and then you know there's some side benefits and I think that it's the latter for a lot of people you know they don't treat it like a friendship they don't treat it like something that has to be nurtured and while I think I'm pretty spoiled because it comes pretty natural for me like I don't feel like I have to force being your friend you and I are like, we, we're just pretty tight. So <laughs> I don't have to like think about it a whole lot. Now I still have to, there's still like intentional effort. I don't want to make it seem like there's not intentional effort because I do have to think like, well, Lexi would like that. I should do that for her. You know, I should surprise her with something small, like the heated blanket. You know, I see something and I think of her. So I'm like, she'd like that. I'll, I'll get that. I'll see if she likes it. And it's not, it's not intended to be like some big thing. But it lets you know that the other person, it lets the other person know that you're thinking about them. And if it's just this one thing every year on one random day, you know, really, it's just February 14th, one, one day of the year, and it's, it's almost expected like, okay, well, I'm going to get a dozen roses and then I know he's thinking about me and then that's about it. And then the next day comes and it's back to the normal. Like what, what happens on February 15th? Does anything out of the norm happen? I mean, flowers, I think, you don't even like flowers. <laughs> I mean, I like flowers. I just don't. I think you could spend your money wiser. Right. But <laughs> like the die. flowers mean more to you on June 15th 
than they, than they mean to you on February 14th? Yeah, I think I think it's just the little like surprises or the daily deposits. And we're using things you, I mean, the flowers or the heated blanket, obviously is something that you purchase, but it doesn't have to be anything monetary. If you're listening to this and you're in a tight spot and you're like, I don't have a clue how I can make my significant other feel appreciated and loved and special on February 14th or whatever random day you select, it doesn't have to be anything monetary. It can be, you know, like, I think that people undervalue the, just the small gestures, like, I don't know, showing your partner off, telling them how proud you are of them. Um, If you know what your partner's love language is, Brett and I are both words of affirmation and if that's not spoken and it's not something that's like that was another it's just a learned thing because if you're in a relationship and you're married and I'm talking to men specifically because a lot of times I think that you think well they married me they're my wife of course they know I love them Mm -hmm. so why do I need to continue to repeating it like it's redundant Mm -hmm. but you need that reminder and you need to make those deposits regardless of if you if you know for a fact that they know you love them and you appreciate them and they know how much you think they're a great mother or a great whatever fill in the blank here you still need to say that it can't go assumed because when it starts to go assumed and you're putting on co- you put it on coast con- cruise control then all of the other things that that need maintenance as well they're going to start slipping through the cracks and when you view it as like a one-time catch-up, then the relationships just becomes transactional. Whether you're the one that's making up for something and you're the one making this grand gesture or you're on the receiving end of it, ladies, where you're saying, well, he screwed up three weeks ago, so you know Valentine's Day is two weeks away. I'm going to get some back. You're viewing it like a scoreboard. And your relationship, if you constantly are like keeping track and tally of who's winning and who's ahead and who owes – then it's it's a losing battle and it's a ticking time bomb before those little just I think they're you know kind of cracks at the the foundation of your relationship they will really start to show their face definitely yeah I guess metaphorically speaking it's I can I can draw a comparison to like just general maintenance on a vehicle like it 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 does the vehicle a lot of good to just do standard routine oil changes tire rotations and if you treat it well along the way as you continually use it and abuse it and you know you you nurture it you make sure that it's well taken care of instead of you know once a year you think okay well better uh, better do something with the car i haven't touched it in a year so relationships are often treated that way and you get in this catch-up game where you're trying to make up for all your shortcomings and and how you know almost trying to uh, to avoid your problems in your relationship and it just doesn't it doesn't work well i mean i don't want to i don't ever want to make it seem like our relationship's perfect i mean we're only 27 and 28 i'm almost 29 it's kind of crazy um so we've only been married for so many years. It's not like we're not going to have problems. You know, we're not going to face obstacles moving forward. And we forward. have before. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's not like um, I'm saying that this is this is the model relationship. But I think that we do have a pretty good thing going where we've recognized that it's the small deposits and it's not these big grand gestures that uh, that truly make a relationship work. Because we do treat it like a friendship. We don't treat it like this transactional thing where we live together and we owe each other these little things because th- these are our roles. We we treat each other like two human beings that, that care about one another, that enjoy each other's presence, and genuinely want to help one another. Yeah, I think it just comes down to like I – I want you to be as happy as possible. I want you to have the best day possible. And if there's just something small that I can do, it's not me thinking about it and being like, well, if I let, you know, do the laundry or let the dogs out or put the trash out, whatever, then Brett's going to owe me. It's because if I do this, then it's something that Brett doesn't have to do and it's going to make his day a little bit better or a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And it's just genuinely wanting that person to be happier and to, to live a better life. Yeah, that's that's been one of the hardest things about being away from you right now 
is that I can't really do a whole lot there. Like I can do things, you know, it's nice that we have phones these days and we can communicate fairly regularly, but it's not the same. You know, I can't physically be here and do things for you. I can, I can talk to you on the phone, but I can't have a good sit down conversation, you know, face to face. We don't get to, we just don't have those same interactions because you talk different whenever you're with one another and you get to share the small things and you just get to truly just keep up with one another on a day to day basis. And that's hard whenever you're away from one another. And we did do that for a brief point in time um, while we were engaged. It was my last year of college. Right. You lived about three hours away. Yeah. And it's just been so long ago. And I mean, that was a totally different phase of our relationship too. Yeah. It's, it's been very just challenging doing it as a married couple. Yeah. And now that we've lived together for over five years, um, if you guys are listening to this and you're not aware, Brett and I have been married for five and a half years. Um, it'll be six in June, um, which is wild. And we met in college my freshman year, got engaged, um, Right after Brett graduated, he graduated a year before me, and then I had one year at college left where he was three hours away from us, or from me, I say us, because I was surrounded by, you know, all my friends and stuff, so it is a very strange situation, and then we got married two weeks after I graduated college. Yeah. We've been pretty much attached to the hip for the past five and a half years outside of these last few months where we've lived separately. So it has been a challenge and I'm so glad that Brett pointed out that we are for sure not the model couple <laughs> and I never want it to sound that way. I always, people always like, I get a lot of engagement and feedback from our, our podcast when we talk about our relationship and talk about what works for us and what hasn't. And they'll like ask us to t elaborate or talk more on it. And I'm always kind of, it's an, like an imposter syndrome thing where I don't want it to be seen as, you know, we are the perfect couple and this is how you should be. It, it is something that so far it has worked really well for us. And I'm also like, I don't want to jinx it either if we're talking about how <laughs> we've been doing pretty well. Um, but yeah, it is, it's just the small deposits. And again, I don't want to demonize if you guys do it big for birthdays and for Valentine's day, that is phenomenal. And I, I love to see that. I love as long as you're happy and you're, you know, it's coming from a place where your partner really just wants you to be happy and wants the best for you, then that's phenomenal. But I don't, I think less so understating those big grand gestures and more so emphasizing the daily things, the daily deposits. Um, that's what the point I'm trying to get across. Mm -hmm. And also understanding your person. And understanding what what really matters to them and not not like whenever you approach them the day before Valentine's Day and say you know like what do you want to do you know what matters to you like try to <laughs> like because then they know what the motive is like yeah. you're just like, trying not to get in trouble right like you're just trying to avoid yeah getting chewed out or them you know getting the cold shoulder for a week like if you genuinely try to figure out what matters most to the other person, then you're going to get somewhere because then you'll figure out, okay, well, she actually doesn't really care that much um, about this, but she really cares about this. Well, and, let's break it down. Okay. You can go first, actually finish your thought. No, I mean, you can go ahead. That, that was pretty much the basis of it. So Brett said, knowing your person and we'll give some like concrete examples. And are there five love language? love languages I think so I, I I know for sure four but I think there's probably five I think that there are five okay so we'll go very very simply the easiest one if you're and you should know this about your partner if they your significant other boyfriend girlfriend husband wife whatever if their love language is gift giving then easy peasy let's get them a gift get them flowers get them jewelry get them whatever if your significant other's love language is words of affirmation, then write them, give them a card and put some thought into what you put into it. Make a, an Instagram post and just say, express your feelings for them. It's super easy. Just let them know how much you appreciate them, how much you love and value them. It's really not that hard. Just put your words on paper or in writing. Um, if your person's love language is physical touch, I think you know what to do. 
<laughs> Touch them. <laughs> yeah, um, if you're significant others, fun fact, my lowest love language is physical touch. <laughs> No one touched me. Um, it, it's funny because I'm such a hugger, but when it comes to, uh, I just like, that's not how I show love or want to be shown love. <laughs> but it's like, damn it, that's what I had in mind. Um, if your significant other's love language is. Just wait till we get home. <laughs> um, I'm losing, what's, uh, acts of service? Yeah. Then I right. bet it would make a really big deal if you like picked up the house or if you you know, went and did some things that are typically on their plate, take it off their plate because then they have that free time and they can spend it however they want. And that's super nice. And hopefully, you know, if you go and you take off some of the things on their to-do list, then you can spend some quality time together, which wraps up. If your love language is quality time, carve out something intentionally and you think of what to do. You want to be together, whether it's going out to dinner, whether it is, you know, a fancy thing or, Maybe you booked a babysitter and it's just you and your um, husband, wife, whatever. You guys are home. You're doing a puzzle together. It is so boring, but Brett and I love puzzles. You're playing a game. You're, I wouldn't recommend like watching a movie or something because you're just kind of like parallel. You're not really engaging with one another, but book a babysitter, have someone watch the kids, spend some time one-on-one where you're actually engaging with one another. Boom. Five love languages. Just know what your partner wants. What they respond really well to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's that's one of the biggest things is that you assume that, okay, well, it's, it's Valentine's Day that I have to do this and this is what will make that person happy. And it's not, a, it's not like this one, like, puzzle piece that works for every single person. Like, you can't just plug it in there and just assume it's going to work. Like, figuring it out and understanding the person, like you're saying, and figuring out what what really trips their trigger, you know, what what really makes them happy, and then you you can execute on that, and you can really make sure that that person feels loved. Yeah, and those concrete examples I just gave, they don't only apply to Valentine's Day. They mean so much if you just make it a regular part of your relationship. And I promise, Valentine's Day won't have the weight it does right now, maybe, because then you're not living and dying by one day on the calendar, and you're like, if I screw that up, then it's all over. But if you could just constantly pour into that person because you genuinely want their day to be better and you want their life to be better and you want them to see that value in you, this is another thing that Brett and I have really, that I will say I'm really proud of us for, is that when we first started dating, I was really codependent on Brett. And not necessarily when we first started dating. In a financial sense, I was very codependent on you. Um, because I was in college and I was broke. I had two jobs and I donated plasma on top of that to make money. I like lived in the financial aid office because I had so many student loans. Um, So I was very codependent on Brett for that. But I had like a social life and I had friends and stuff. But when we first got married and like I was taken out of like the college setting, I didn't have that social environment. I had no friends where we lived, didn't know anyone. I was away from my family. I was extremely codependent on Brett because on top of all that, I also did not have a career or a job that had any sort of fulfillment for me. So I was very codependent on him. My days kind of just revolved around when he would leave for work and when he would get home and I would go to work and hate it. And then I would just wait for him to get home. That way we could just spend some time together. And then as I have really come into my own on, you know, just finding myself and what I'm super passionate about and what I'm good at doing and I feel fulfilled from, then it's not so much like, oh, Brett completes me or I complete Brett. And I'm not going to speak for him because I don't think he was really, he didn't lean on me the way that I leaned on him. But now we are, we're very whole and independent. Like, as my, this, I say this not in a bad way, but like Brett would be just fine without me. I would be just fine without Brett. But we enjoy each other so much. We love each other so much that we just, we want to be together. You know, don't, I mean, I don't know. That could probably be interpreted poorly, but it's not like we're dependent on one another to survive. It's that I genuinely want to be around you so much and I want to, provide value and contribute to your life just because I love you, you know? 
Yeah. I don't know we, that I articulated that well, but well, we have discussed that before one one time or another, and it is true. Like people do say that oftentimes like I wouldn't be able to live without this other person. And terrible things do happen to people. Like unexpected horrible things happen and life does go on and you do live without that person. And it's it's unthinkable for me to think about not having you. But yes, I could, I, I would, I would be able to go on without you. It would be absolutely horrific. <laughs> I mean, it, I, I seriously can't hardly yeah, it's fathom just that you wouldn't how, hor- want to. how horrific that would, that point in time would be in my life. But simply put, yes, I, I would be able to operate without you. Would I, I, but it would be detrimental, you know, to my, just my overall well being because I, I crave being with you. Like you are like, I, there's billions of people on this earth, but I, I I do think that you are you are the only person that is for me, and that is very special. So whenever you do find that person, like you you can, you truly can't fathom what life would be like without them. But like you're saying, we are two wholly operational units, and we we can do things independently. We thrive together. You know, we, we are better together because we we contribute to one another and we help fill in the cracks. You know, your shortcomings, I try to fill in my shortcomings, which there are a plethora of, you fill in. And, you know, we do better together than we could independently. I don't want to take away from that. Yes. So if you think about it from that standpoint of like, yes, you are. If, if you think about your the person that you love so much your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your whatever that they are, they are this fully functioning person. And because they're, I mean, hate it or love it, like it's the truth, they will still survive and they could go on. So don't you want to contribute and bring as much value and make their life even better? That way they just, they feel appreciated and they feel like they know they want you to be in their life, you know? Don't you want to just continue to show and continue to pour into them and remind them why they decided to to choose you out of a billion people? They chose you and you chose them. Yeah, that's 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 the thing is just continually showing that instead of just showing it once a year. I think that's the bottom line. And Valentine's Day is that for so many people and their the relationships could truly be so much more than what than what they are they're just not willing to put in the little transactional or i don't want to use transactional the little deposits mm-hmm. every single day and those are what really make a difference rather than that one big grand gesture once a year yeah it's not that like your marriage is a one-time fee it's like that that relationship is rented and you just you have to pay your rent and that's why the divorce rate's so high in my opinion is because like it has become like a big big thing for people to uh to like want to show off like one big you know big things that they do for the relationship and then they let everything else slide you know it's like okay i'm going to show off this and you know it's kind of a keeping up with the joneses thing with relationships and then if you're looking at that and social media makes it so much harder where you know you're scrolling just endless amounts on TikTok and Instagram and you're seeing all of these other grand gestures and then you're putting yourself up to theirs just to play that comparison game and you don't know what's happening behind closed doors. You don't know, yeah. you know, all the intricacies of that relationship. So it is truly just a it's a you and you type of deal. Like putting your your relationship up to someone else's is the exact same concept of putting up your fitness journey next to someone else's because you don't know the starting point, you don't know the details, you don't know all of what goes into it constant context is important and you don't get context in one individual moment and life is so damn short stop don't live and die by someone else's relationship or someone else's life or someone else's purchases it's exhausting like brett said just like the keeping up with the joneses type thing you have this one person in your life and if you're constantly focused on someone else's relationship and you know so and so's husband boyfriend whatever did this then you're gonna lose the one that you have And that's just, I think it's an entitlement type issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And social media is really 
just put an emphasis on what where there was already a problem it just amplified it because it really just made it even more so publicized of what people were doing and then you get focused on what they're doing not what you're doing and and that's just a downward spiral yeah so, so bottom line i i don't want you guys to and i'm talking because i know i have a lot of younger than me ladies women girls that live and die on social media and they see everything that everyone else is doing and you probably are stacking your life up against theirs whether it's a relationship or otherwise that those big grand gestures are not the things that I think of when I think of what makes Brett and I's relationship super special just like at the end of the day when we think of our lives like going on cool trips or vacations or those you know what you think of the postcard moments, those aren't the ones that I think of when I think of our five and a half years married so far. You know, it's it's spending like those quiet mornings having coffee together. It's just like, you know, looking forward to Sundays in the fall and the winter when we watch football together. It's all of those little moments that we so often take for granted because we're constantly fixated on the next big Instagram worthy post, mm -hmm. the next big milestone that we can flaunt to try to keep up with that, you know, unrealistic highlight reel. So just remember that your real life is happening in real time and and just don't discredit those day-to-day -day things because there's a million opportunities to show the people around you that you love them and that you appreciate them. And it's just a matter of, you know, you just have to want to make the people around you their lives better and easier. And I think that's the the start of, you know, showing your, your love and your appreciation. That's what matters to me at least. Yeah, no, I mean, it's absolutely what what matters the most to me i mean here's another way to think about it like if i if i die tomorrow what you're probably going to have the hardest time um uh, getting over my taxes <laughs> <laughs> i'm really gonna be screwed when it comes i'm going to prison well, you're going to prison <laughs> <laughs> tax fraud will be my hardest time yes you will you won't know how to do anything <laughs> Uh, no, but the uh, the thing that you would miss most initially, what would be the hardest, is routine, like your daily routine. It's and it was no different than like whenever we lost Sadie. Like whenever you lose someone that's just a fixture in your life, and you get used to these routines and them being in certain places and doing certain things with them, it's not it's not the big grand gesture. It's not like I think about, uh, you're not going to think about, well, so-and-so got me this big thing on this particular day. Like this day sucks because I don't have that big thing that's being presented to me. You're, you're not going to think about that. You're going to think about not getting to experience the day to day and not getting to, to do something with that, with that person. Like, just a simple thing like if if i died tomorrow coffee would probably be a pretty brutal thing because you and i always have coffee together and if i died tomorrow going on walks in the evening on 75 hard probably would be really hard because you and i always you know generally do that together like there's all these little things that we do together and not getting to do those with with, with that person that's what that's what's the biggest obstacle for people to get past is those shared moments that you've had in the past and not being able to to continue doing those things yeah that's making me cry just thinking about it all right i'm gonna wrap it up um yeah i think just in summary pay the little deposits from day to day let the people that you love know that you love them whether it's february 14th or any other freaking day on the calendar because the clock is ticking you don't have all of the time in the world with them that's right. I love you, baby. I love you. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. We will talk to you guys next Wednesday. Um, if you have any comments, suggestions, topics that you'd like to hear us talk about, you can email those to us at our on our email. At pod at lexijwellness.com.